So let's talk about the savings rate here. Excess savings uh, has shrunk or have shrunk significantly since 2021. Tell me what's behind this sudden drop? Well, of course, part of the, the fact that prices have been so elevated uh, post pandemic has drawn down those savings. But you know, it's, it's not as bad, perhaps, as we might say. So pandemic, this excess savings was really just a calculus uh, really publicized by the San Francisco Federal Reserve, where it talks about savings have been over and above the pre pandemic trend. We pulled all those back. We're, we're back down to our more normal levels of savings. But you got to remember, there's a difference between the stock of savings and the flow. Uh, at this point, we still see um, a, a pullback in consumer spending that we'll see later this year. That's part of the implications you asked, you know, why do we care about uh, savings rates and excess savings? Uh, it's, it's certainly going to put a little more pressure on the consumer as we go through the summertime and going into the third and fourth quarter of this year. Uh, what risk does the, the, the shrinking of the uh, excess savings rate, what, does, what risk does that pose for consumer spending? Yeah, so I, th I think it's important to remember the, the domestic economy is supported by upper income households and those upper income households are typically homeowners and so have a little less pressure on them from rising interest rates. Uh, a lot of people locked in very low mortgages right after the pandemic when interest rates were so low. And so mortgage debt financing costs are, uh, or, or servicing costs are pretty low for that, that segment. Uh, you know, I think we're, we're still seeing really two, very two different economies, the haves and the have nots. Uh, there's still incredible pricing pressures on lower income. Yes, the rate of change has slowed. So we, I'm certainly in the camp that inflation is decelerating and decelerating enough for the Fed to cut this year. But the levels of prices still a, a challenge for many households. Do you, do you expect the change in the savings rate to start to change consumer habits? And by that, I mean, you know, right after the pandemic, it was like YOLO, right? Everybody was spending on travel and you only live once, and revenge travel and all these other different words that we came up with. Um, so do we return now back to kind of like a, a normal kind of spending pattern where people are not going all out on trips and on restaurants and they're spending their income mainly on, you know, everyday items? So we did have somewhat of a spending splurge. Uh, everybody, you know, buying uh, new furniture for their home office or uh, finally going on that European vacation that they wanted to in years past. So there was a spending splurge. We do think that some of that demand was pulled forward into 2022, 2023, particularly in durable goods purchases. So 2024, latter half of 2024, we're certainly gonna see a little bit of a slowdown. In fact, in the most recent personal income and spending report, which also gives us the Fed's preferred metric of the PCE deflator, we did see that real spending, particularly on goods, pulled back and declined. We expect that to happen. Uh, again, not catastrophic, but part of it is just because we pulled a lot of that forward in the years uh, past, right after the reopenings, uh, after the global pandemic. Is there a potential for that pull forward to be so intense that it actually triggers a recession? Well, that certainly is the debate. You know, at this point, the, the recession risk is pretty low uh, because we don't see an ebb and flow as much in the demand for services. So when you, when you think about your average household and you look over the past several business cycles, the, the ebbs and flows of good spending is pretty dramatic. The, the spending on services is not as volatile. And it makes sense, right? It's healthcare, it's housing, it's food, it's some of these uh, services Insurance. that you rec regularly. Uh, and so you're, you're certainly going to see a slowdown. The, the risk of recession at this point is very, very low.